I'm Brother Anthony Roberts greeting you from the five Gospel Halls here in Tobago. We are delighted that you will be able to join us for today's program, Moments with Truth. We are praying that as you view this program, that you will receive a blessing from the Lord. For those who are not saved, we are praying very specially that you will receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior, even today, as you hear the Word of God. And for those of you who are saved, this is our prayer. And we turn to the Word of God. God on your most holy faith, as you view the Luke's Word of Gospel, God. Luke's Gospel, chapter 8. And we start to read at verse 41. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house, for he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him, touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stanched. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied Peter, and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody had touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him, she declared unto him, before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith had made thee whole, go in peace. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered and said, answered him saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden, and all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand, called her, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished, but he, cha he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. We trust that God would bless his word to us for Jesus' sake. Amen. Jesus has power to deliver. He has power to save. He has power to heal. He has power to give life to the dead. We have read of two females, and they had just about the same period of life in different circumstances. First, we find Jairus' daughter, who was 12 years old, and she was sick. And Jairus knew who Jesus was. He knew what Jesus was capable of doing. And so he 
came to the Lord Jesus in order that Jesus would come to his house and heal his daughter. Now Jesus heard the request. Jesus was acceding to that request. But you know there are times when things don't go the way we want them. Sometimes we go to God about things, about crises in our lives. And it seems as though God isn't hearing, he's not answering, as though he's not concerned. You think of those disciples who were on the sea. They left one side of the sea and they were crossing over. And Jesus said to them, let's cross over. And he goes into the lower part of the ship at the back and he fell asleep. And while they're going, a great storm arises. And those disciples, out of fear and panic, they awoke him and made one of the most unexpected accusations against the Lord Jesus. Don't you care that we are perishing? Can we ever say to God that he doesn't care? Because he does not do things the way we want, how we want, and when we want it, does that say he doesn't care? And of course, he would have brought them relief by rebuking the wind and the sea, and then he questions their faith. And recognizing that they were overtaken with fear. And fear and faith don't live in the same house. If we are going to trust God, we have to learn to trust him by faith. And it is by faith that men will be saved through their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the, Jesus is on his way to the house. But we also have to remember that God has other business to deal with. And as he's going, he comes across a woman who had a 12-year problem. 12-year-old girl is sick, and the father doubtless recognized that death was staring them in the face, and he would have wanted Jesus to make haste and get to his house. But as he's going, there's somebody else with that problem, and he doesn't put that person off in order that he would attend to the 12-year-old girl, he stops and he pays attention to this woman who was losing blood for 12 years. Those in the medical field would know that it's not often that somebody would survive a condition like that for so long. Especially if that flow is persistent and uh, that is happening on such a regular basis. The woman, we are told, would have spent all she had. Have been to all kinds of physicians, whether legal or illegal or illegal. She would have tried just about everything everybody would have recommended. You know, especially in these parts, we have a remedy for everything. And just about everybody you talk to have a different remedy. I used to say to my mother sometimes, when she had different, going through different challenges with her health, and she would tell me that this one recommended this bush and the other one recommended that bush. I said, Mommy, you're going to poison yourself for this these days. <laughs> because there is no end to the solutions that are available. Yet they never seem to bring a full solution. And she would have tried everything that was possible. Because desperation brings people to those to that point where they, they feel that they haven't died with all they tried, 
There's not the likelihood this one is going to kill them. And it may just work. And she was no different. But she heard of Jesus. And she knew that he was passing her way. And she took advantage of the opportunity. She said to herself, if I could only touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. What a solution for her to have come up with. She did not consult with anybody. I believe God would have put it in her heart that this is what she needed to do to touch the Savior, the Deliverer. And she followed her mind, her heart, and she reached out as Jesus got near and she touched the hem of his garment. And immediately we are told the issue stanched or it came to an end. It stopped immediately. And she knew it. When we are sick and we, we get better, we know that we are better. When we are lost and God saves us, we know that he saved us. There is no guessing about God's salvation when he does a work in the heart, in the life. When he turns that life from sin, brings that person out of darkness into his marvelous light. When he turns the life around from sin and wickedness to a life of righteousness. I've often said to people, there are those who question my salvation time and again, especially as a young Christian, and young Christians beware of that. There are those who will challenge you. How do you know that you're saved? And they even make mock of, of your salvation and they ask you if it's a shoe soul that got saved and things like that. Because the devil desires to ridicule the work of God in your life. And he will do everything possible to see if he can get you to, to be derailed from your faith in Jesus. But thank God that when, when Jesus saves a soul, he saves a soul once and for all. For all eternity. We are being given an eternal salvation because that is what Jesus procured. That is what he died for. That is what he rose from the dead for. To give us eternal life. And the Bible tells us that that life is in his son. And so Jesus stops and he inquires, who touched me? Last time I spoke, I spoke about um, Nicodemus or Zacchaeus. It was Zacchaeus, yes. And the press was so heavy that he could not, he could not see Jesus. So he made some heights and he saw Jesus and Jesus saw him. Took note of him. And here there was a crowd pressing in on Jesus. But the difference with the touch was that Jesus knew that power, virtue had gone out of him to the healing, the deliverance of one he knew of. As God, he knew all things. And so the disciples in their ignorance would ask, how could you ask such a question? Who touched me? Everybody's jamming up against you. Yes, they were all jamming against him and pushing, but she touched by faith and he knew it because power had gone out of him. And that power is what healed her. And so when Jesus questioned, the woman is a little bashful, a bit shy, to own up that she touched him and she was healed. But you know, there comes a time when we have to admit that when God does a work in our lives, it's not something that we can stay quiet about. 
and we, we must stay quiet about. We must let others know what Jesus did for us. Because the same thing he did for us, he can do for them. I thank God for those who would have told me about the gospel of Jesus Christ when I was lost. Those who would have shared the truth of God's word that I needed God's salvation. And thank God for the day that he saved me by his grace. And that's our responsibility as well, to let others know that Jesus is the only savior of sinners and that he can save them and will save them if they will open their hearts to him. And so she came forward and she admitted. And of course, there is, Jesus makes a declaration to her. He calls her daughter. Jairus was concerned about his daughter, his 12-year-old daughter. Jesus, having done a great work in this woman's life, he calls her daughter. Because not only did she experience physical healing, but by her admission, her public pronouncement that is consistent with Romans 10 and 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So that by virtue of her confession of Jesus as her deliverer, she experienced new life, new birth. So not only was she physically healed, but she was spiritually healed. That's why Jesus calls her daughter. And so having finished with this daughter who had 12 years of sickness and set her on a way, he's ready to move on to Jairus' 12-year-old daughter. And just about that time, somebody comes from Jairus' house and they say, don't bother, don't bother the master. Leave him alone. There's no hope left. She is dead. Your daughter is dead. Could you imagine how Jairus' heart would have fallen, knowing the effort he made, he was in touch with the one who could give life and can sustain life. He made the request, he knew that Jesus was on his way, and now he is getting news that his daughter is dead. Think of the momentary kind of disappointment and the kinds of emotions, negative emotions, that would have come into him. But you know, Jesus offers him hope. Jesus says, let me, let me catch my bearing. It's in verse 40, 45 thereabout. Verse 49 into verse 50. But Jesus heard it. He answered him saying, fear not. Believe only and she shall be made whole. Does that offer Jairus any comfort? He has no idea that Jesus would bring his daughter back to life. But like that man who when he was questioned about believing in Jesus, he says, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. I would like to believe that you'll do something. But there is something in my mind that's telling me that there's not the likelihood that you can do anything. Only believe. She shall be made whole. And then, of course, Jesus journeys to the house keeps his word, his commitment, he journeys to the house, 
And of course, when he gets there, there was like a wake going on. And there were, maybe the professional whalers were there. In those days, they had situations where there were, uh, women were hired to wail, to cry. And they'll ball down the place and make, create such a sad environment. And of course, what transpired seems to me that there were some of those professional whalers there. Because of course, when Jesus gets to the house, he did not permit any other person than Peter and James and John, the father and the mother, to go inside. And then he makes a statement. He says to them, weep not. She is only, she's not dead, but sleepeth. Verse 53, they laughed him to scorn. These people who were wailing down the place, because they were so sorry for this 12-year-old girl who had died. Those emotions suddenly changed to one of mockery of the Lord Jesus. And of course, he knew their unbelief. He knew that they could not deal with what was coming. And so he puts them out of the house. They have no, have no part with what he's going to do. And so he takes the parents, Peter, James, and John with him, and they go inside, and he puts forth his hand, takes the girl by the hand, and he says, made arise. And the Bible tells us in verse 55, a spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded them to give her meat. Maybe she was a bit undernourished why she had died. We have to learn to take care of our bodies. Sometimes we work our fingernails off and the last thing we think of is taking a proper meal. I believe that Jesus, the reason they, they gave us something to eat, the body must have have deteriorated to the point where she probably was not eating. And so we have a responsibility, especially as Christians, because our bodies are the temples of the living God. And he wants us to move around and take his message to others, do his work. And if we don't have healthy bodies, there is a likelihood that we won't be able to do his work the way he wants us to. And so, he brings the girl back to life. Could you imagine the joy, the excitement that filled the house? But of course, the gainsayers had to be put on the outside. I want to say to you this morning, if you're not saved, Jesus wants to save you. He wants to deliver you from your sin. He wants to bring you into a living relationship with himself. Before you come to know Jesus as Savior, you are dead in trespasses and sin. That's what the Bible teaches us. We are dead in sins, in trespasses. When man sinned against God in the garden, his spirit died. When God said to Adam, the day you eat of the fruit of the tree of, of the tree of life, of, of the tree of that forbidden tree, dying you will surely die. Of course, um, Satan put his own little spin on that. You shall not surely die. And that was believed by Eve. And she went ahead, she saw that the fruit was good for food, it was, want, it was something to be admired and so on. And she took off the fruit. And to add insult to injury, she gave it to Adam. And he ate. And that moment, the spirit of man died. 
so that sometimes I've tried to explain how a person outside of Christ operates. Think of a jetliner that operates on three engines. Most often they operate on either two or four. But think of one that operating on three engines. And one of those, in flight, one of those engines go down. It cuts off. It goes dead. The liner is not going to fall out of the air because it has two other engines that keeps it running. It can go the distance. Maybe it would go slower. It would get to its destination, but it will get there on two engines. When man sinned, God made him body, soul, and spirit. His spirit died. He continued to live body and soul. And he feels that all is well. Of course, he knew that all wasn't well. That's why he hid from God. That's why they hid from God. And that's why they were shamed in his presence and so on. And so until a person comes to know Jesus as Savior, they are, they are running on two engines, body and soul. Spirit is dead. When you come and trust Jesus as Savior, his spirit enlivens, brings alive your spirit. And Romans tells us that his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Thank you for viewing today's broadcast, Moments with Truth. We want to invite you to call us at 796-0979 or 283-2222. Or you can email us at afrob64 at gmail.com. If you look on the screen, you will see our various locations and the times of our services. Be free to attend. A welcome awaits you at all times. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life. Holy Savior, sanctified forever, beautiful words, wonderful words. Wonderful words of love, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of love.